When did you first move to Los Angeles? Um, the first time I moved to Los Angeles was in 2008 to 2009. It was actually a year after my brother's death. Like I was just like, I was kind of like running away from my problems. Uh, I was like, okay, cause I was already in the business for a while. Like I was already making films in Northern California and producing stuff and directing and acting. But I was just like, okay, I want to step up my game. Came down here then after a year, I was like, whew, I don't know if I want to, like LA is an interesting thing. So I moved back up to Sacramento. Um, and I was starting like, I would focus on comedy. I was doing stand up, and I was, did that for like about five years. Like right away, I was just like, oh, I'm done with the film business. I was like, it was totally different because LA, there's a lot of fakes, flakes, and sharks, as I call it here. And they're always looking to make a quick buck off of people. And I was already experienced. So I was like, man, do I really want to do this? I'm like, I, I know I'm going to be in the business no matter what, but do I really want to be in the Hollywood game? And I was like, ah. So it kind of went into comedy and then kind of remind me like why I love making films and working on films and stuff. So I was just like, it's like okay, that passion kind of relit up. And then I came back down here in 2013. And the only reason why I did that was because I made a web series. And when I made a web series and it was somewhat moderately successful, a production company wanted to make it into a TV pilot. And then I'm like, okay, I'm gonna move down here. So I kind of had a day job at a time that had a job down here. So I was like, okay, I could just transfer. So I transferred down here, so I had a job. But the production company then wanted to make it into a feature. And I was just like, I don't wanna do that. Cause I wanted to work on television. That was like, that's where the nine to five in the business is. Cause films, you'll spend two to three years sometimes, average, working on something. And you make no money whatsoever. Like a lot of people are like, oh, you're gonna make a lot of money. No. Television, your, your money is like a steady day job. It's like you make your money. So that's why. So I've been here for almost six years now. So when you came down in 2008, 2009, how old were you? I was 23, 24. Okay. Yeah, I was still young. I was like, and that was the first time I was on my own too, because I was still living at home. So I was just like, it's like, oh, adventure time, you know, yay. And I went, and I came down here, I was just like, I was like, whoa, this is kind of different. I'm like, because I even got a job right away. I started working at a movie theater. And I was just like, and ironically, that's the thing too, is like a lot of the people that I work with now are actually in the business still and actually successful. Like I was working at Arclight Cinemas oh, in nice. Sherman Oaks. And that's where I met like Joe Begas and like Josh Ethier and all them. Like they're like big now, like they're like really big. So it's kind of fun. Like, oh, we all worked together at Arclight before we became successful, so to speak. Oh, love our bike. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And so you came down here and your brother had been gone for a about, year? About, let's see. Actually, no, not less than a year, actually, because he passed away in September 2007 and I moved to L.A. June 2008. So and a little less than a year. And so you two would do filmmaking? Yeah, we were like, yeah, because like we were like making films like. He was always like my producer AD when I was like, so he was like my, my personal like business partner, but he would always be like my AD and producer worrying about the money and the organization. And I'm like, okay, I could work on the technical stuff and everything. Cause we were still young. Cause like I graduated high school when I was 15. So when my parents thought I was too young to study acting at UC Davis. So I was like, okay, I went to a community college and studied film, but a lot of college kids were like, why is this 15 year old in our <laughs> class? So I had to do, I learned everything myself. So I was like, I learned how to shoot the camera. I knew the lenses. Like I was just like, I knew I had to learn everything myself. And then occasionally when people see my footage and like, this was one guy, um, Brian, and he was just like, oh, he's shooting some good stuff. So he edited a lot of my stuff. So I, I don't have the patience for editing. It's for some reason I sit there and I'm like, it's like, if I look at this image one more time, the computer's gonna be out the window. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, he always like, he saw my stuff. And he's like, oh, this is actually really good. But no one else besides that would want to work with like a 15 year old at the time. Cause like I was 15 and my brother, he was still going to high school. Um, was, Cause he was a year and a half younger than I was. So it's weird selling to see two kids like, oh, let's do this and that. We always make jokes. Uh, it's like, oh, they're the future Weinsteins, but let's hopefully not the bad Weinsteins. A lot of people are like, what? Click, click, click. <laughs> but um, yeah, like that's how we always did. We always worked together. We did our own kind of thing. Kind of made our own style, I guess, in a way. And so how did you come down here? Did you drive from the yes, area? Yes, yes, I, I, I drove here. Like I actually packed everything in my car what I had. Like I did the typical like, I wanna move to Hollywood. 
pack everything in the car. Like I had a place I was looking at. I had three places I was supposed to look at. Um, one person flaked. One looked like it was like the mass murder was done. In the park. Like I went in there and I was like, it was already sketchy. And this was like in Sun Valley. And it was just like, like brown stuff on the wall. I was just like, I was like, okay. And the guy was really, really weird too. So I was just like, okay, this guy's a serial killer. And I think that is why he's looking on Craigslist. And I found the last place. <laughs> the last place I found was really good, but I couldn't move into a week. So I was like, oh, I could do that. I could uh, stay at this motel. So I found this really cheap motel, which was also a bad idea. Where, where uh, just the low, not you don't tell us the street. But where it's like, it, it was, it was in North Hollywood. <laughs> and it was just like one of those like by the night ones. <laughs> And I was like, oh, 40 boxes is so cheap. Yeah. And you're sitting here like, there's a lot of roaches. I'm like, I, and I didn't notice till like after the first night. And then like after that, I've been had this like OCD thing where I always leave my lights on now. Like oh, okay. no matter what, I leave my lights on no matter what. Because one day you hear, you hear this. And I was like, what is this? This was the night when my lights were off. And as you could hear, you could actually hear. Oh, the roaches. On the wall. Oh, wow. And I was like, what the hell was that? Turn in, I was just like, no, nope, I'm going to sleep in my car tonight. <laughs> So I slept no. in my car that night and I found another, like I stayed like a, um, a Super A after that. I was like, okay, 70 bucks a night, here okay. we go. <laughs> it's like, I don't have the money, but I don't care, here, take it. But yeah, I was like, that itself was interesting. Then I moved to my new place and stayed there for about a year. And then it started getting pricey then because that's when things started, because like the recession and stuff mm -hmm. was happening in 2008, 2009. So everyone was just like, everything started costing a lot. And like my two roommates, one was going back to Philadelphia, who was an editor and she, she stopped editing. She like, she went to nursing school after that. And then um, another one was also an editor. He no longer edits. He went, moved to Seattle, he worked at a post office. Okay. So I'm sitting there, I'm like, out of all the group, I'm the only one that still works. So I'm like, like oh, okay. But I have no backup plan either. So I'm like, uh. but yeah. So that's, that was my, my first experience in LA. And then I got a job right away. So I'm like, but then you moved back home. Yes, I moved back home. Um, it was just like the business, it was like I said, a lot of fakes, flakes, and sharks. Like what? Sorry to uh, interrupt, but what did there, they do? There were some really sketchy producers type people like, cause they knew I did stuff and on the lower end, like a lot of short films. I've, been, I've gone to film festivals, like good sized film festivals, like Sacramento International Film Festival and stuff. So I've been at film festivals, like my films open for bigger films too. And, um, just like they always come in like, oh, I got nine million dollars. Instead of that, I have this nameless talent. I'm like, okay. And I'm like, and this is before like I knew contract laws too. Like I was like 23, 24. I knew the business. So I knew they're like talking at her butt. But now that I, I kind of study contract law and stuff so I can negotiate. So I don't need an agent when I negotiate. I'm like, no, I want this, this, and this, this. I want this in my writer. I want this. I want that. And people are like, you know so much. I'm like, yeah, because I don't want to get screwed over. So when like this other day, a producer came up to me, see me writing at Starbucks. I write at Starbucks all the time. I was like, oh, what you do? I'm like, I'm a writer, director. I call myself a content creator, a content creator, actor, comedian. I was like, oh yeah, I'm doing this film with the Terminator um, stunt coordinator or something. And I have $16 million. And I was like, oh, so is it going to be a equity investment? Or, and he's like, yeah. He didn't know what it was like an equity investment to come out. So I was like, I knew where he would be asking me. I was like, because I sit down, I'm like, oh, is it going to be equity based or did it do it? And he's just sitting like, uh, I'm like, uh huh, you're a fake. <laughs> so I'm like, I always do that where it's like, I sit down, I'm very, as a person too, I'm also very picky and selective in my, my, my like stuff I want to do. Like, oh, what was it? Um, I was supposed to direct a feature in 2018, summer, 2018, after my film festival, because people were offering me gigs and stuff. And I was just like, mm, 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 maybe, okay script. But they wanted to shoot, because the producer was in Louisiana, and they wanted to shoot either there or Texas. And I was like, all right, cool. And the script was a slasher flick. And I'm like, okay, I always want to do a slasher. I'm like, I'm a genre filmmaker. So I'm like, okay, it'd be something fun to do. And we did like a couple passes through the script and I didn't get I didn't give myself any credit because it was kind of a mess. I was like, I just reorganized his stuff. Everything was there. It's just I reorganized like, okay, this scene over here should be here and here. And it looked, made it look a lot better. And he's like, okay. And we actually had a couple of like B listers interested in it. And I was like, all right, cool. And he's like, oh, and this like this part kills me the most. He's like, okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do crowdfunding first, and then figure out the budget. And I'm like, 
that's not how it works, bro. <laughs> I'm like, um, you want to have a budget first, then crowdfund because my short film Night Night, even though it was like thirty five hundred bucks, I knew we had to do crowdfunding. I'm like, okay, we had a budget for this, this, and this because it was set in the eighties. It was a retro horror flick. So I'm sitting there. I'm like, okay, we need to make sure we have wallpaper like from the eighties. A lot of people don't have wallpaper nowadays. Um, we had to find toys. Like we all went out like prop shops and everything to make it look authentic. And that's why a lot of people love it was because it looked like it was in the eighties. It wasn't the campy over the top, like, oh, wink, wink, tongue in cheek. It's the eighties. Like we authentically made it look like the eighties. And we had a budget for it. Like we had to figure it out. So I'm like, why are we gonna do a 90 minute feature with no budget? And he's one of those self-proclaimed, um, <laughs> what this is another thing that goes back to like LA people. Um, he created a, a film festival, he co-created a film festival and he wrote a screenplay and gave himself an award. <laughs> And I was like, it happens a lot. No, I was saying it happens <laughs> exactly. And I'm like, and that's not the first time I saw it. I was just like, really? I'm like, yeah. you just gave yourself an award. I'm like, that's not really an award. But yeah, so I just sit there and I kind of chuckle. I'm like, oh man, like some of the stuff, the stories I have where I just sit there, I'm like, oh man, this is gonna be a great story to tell on stage one day or on screen because there's some really crazy people. <laughs>